Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. Today we're taking a look at Evenfall. Evenfall's coming, a time of magic, witches, spells, and competition. Uh, yep. You're, you're trying to, you're a group of, of magic witches here, and uh, warlocks and whatever, with cool hats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, this is a card engine building style game yeah. of sorts. Let me show you. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to pick one of the covens in the game. You can play on one side where they're all the exact same, or you can play on the other side where they have special abilities, and they're going to be slightly asymmetrical. Each player will have a place of power that they'll start with, and you'll have ways to get more of them in front of you, but the game is going to revolve around this deck of cards and these resources. you got potions, and then herbs, and then knowledge are the three different ones. There's going to be three rounds in the game, and each round, players are going to take actions until all of them pass, then there's going to be a battle, and then you go on to the next round, or you end the game. The first thing you'll do in each turn is you get your resources here. So this says, for example, I'm going to draw six books, uh, I mean, six cards, I'm going to get three books, and I'm going to get two mana. There's a mana track here where you'll keep track of the mana over the course of the game. This upper track is where you'll keep track of your victory points. On a player's turn, one of their actions can be discovering a place of power. So next to the board, you'll see there's these three sideboards, the Central Mountains of Northern Lakes and the Southern Shores, and I'll have a place of power on each of them. And so to take them, I'm going to place, let's say I want, for example, this cavern. You'll notice it has two witches there. I'm going to have to place two witches here in this spot to take this cavern, which is not refilled. It's refilled from the beginning at the, at the end of every round. I'm then going to place it here in my outer circle. So this whole thing is the coven. You have an outer circle and an inner circle. When you take place of power, they're placed in the outer circle. Besides taking a place of power, I can send over a witch to do one of the actions. There's three spots here. Turn one resource into two other resources and three mana. Turn a card in for three resources, or draw three cards, move a card from your outer circle to inner circle, and draw two. So players can go and take those spots. Now, I'm mentioning witches. Everyone has four witches and four elders. Witches can be sent out to the spots. Elders cannot. Another thing a player can do is they can activate this token here. You'll just flip it over to show it's been activated. And you'll get all the resources there, as well as any resources shown on the place of powers that you've taken. Now, this is an important thing. Place of power will give you resources when you activate that. Once you move them down here, they're no longer going to get those. But the whole point of this game is to play cards from your hands. So there are two kinds of cards in your hands. There are these specialists, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then there are rituals. Rituals must be played on a place of power, and they cost the resources there. This one costs two books a leaf and two potions. This one here, just a book and two potions. If you pay that, you put the ritual on it. Now, if the place that you have on the ritual has an activation thing, this one, for example, gives a potion, and it says, if I bind it with a familiar there, I will also get two points. Once you have the ritual on it, it stays with it, even if that place of power moves down. This ritual is going to be worth points at the end of the game, but only if it moves down. So you're going to want to move it down at some point over the course of the game. This one also offers a spot to put one of your witches. And if you move it down, you can then start putting your elders on that spot. And I don't have time to go over all of these. There's just tons of different rituals, enchantments, and artifacts, and things that you can use over the course of the game. There's a couple other things to mention as you, sometimes things will let you move up on the coven track and that's going to give you points and or moving things down um, from your outer circle to your inner circle. This is also where you'll play specialists. Specialists have a cost, this one costs three books. You place them here and they give you a power for the rest of the game. Each time I uh, move a uh, place of power down, I harvest that place of power. After revealing your mana dial, you can change the mana value up to plus two. So you can add these here as, and you just can only have one of each, but they're going to cost resources and they're worth points at the end of the game. You can instead take one of these people and stick them under the bottom of your board as a council member. The first one costs one of every resource and two of every resource. This just says each time you win a battle, you get four points. 
At the end of the game, get two for each place of power with a different name in your coven. Very, very powerful cards, but they get to be pretty expensive. At the end of every round, there's a battle at each of the three locations. Anybody who's there, so here it would just be blue and red, but there might be multiple people in these spots. Each person you have there is going to be worth one, and you're going to be able to spend the mana that you've been collecting. Each player does this with a little dial that they will use, and they can put up to nine of it there. These will be revealed at the same time. Whoever spends the most is going to get a rune. At the beginning of the game, there's gonna be some runes placed in each of these. And so whoever has the highest power will take one of these. These can be placed on a matching place of power. You'll notice this one here has the line and the chevret. Um, so this dot wouldn't work there, but if I put the line there, any ritual that's on there at the end of the game the points for that will be doubled. But also, depending on how much power, you're going to get a reward. So if I have eight power, I'm gonna get five points, two points, and a potion in a book. If my power was seven, I would just get these things. If my power was three, I would get nothing. Also, whoever wins one of the place of power is also gonna be the starting player for the next round. So you'll have these battles after each of the three rounds. After the final battle, you will score all the, your points all through your tableau, and whoever has the most is the winner. So first of all, the theme here, I don't normally talk too much about the themes in this regard, but if you're not a big fan of witchy themes, this one I feel is pretty strong. Like, you are... A place of power. I'm summoning a ritual. I don't know if it's... I, I think if... I don't know if I would say witchy. I think it's druidic. It's very, like, okay, druid. druid fair. You know, the power of the forest, the owls, and the, you know... Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel witchy like Salem witchy, but it does feel like you are part of, like, a druid cult kind of thing. And if you don't like that, I'm just sure. saying that now, because... I think the theme is there, at least in the way you're, you're talking about everything. At least the, I need a place of power. I will not cast a ritual. Yeah. And yes, it's all mechanical. Me. Yeah. But it was less in the background than sometimes a game like this would be. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's a fair way to put it. Did you like the art? I think the art is fantastic. I like the theme, too, actually. I think it, it handles what it does well. You know, it's interesting. It's an interesting world. It does not feel generic. And when I think wizards... Especially dueling wizards or uh, witches or anything like that, I tend to immediately go be on guard. Because I'm like, oh, here we go. It's going to be generic. This one didn't feel generic. I think the artwork helps with that. And I think the world building, you know, it's, it's a Euro game, but whatever world building is happening is well done. So, yeah, I like the look and the, and the vibe of it. I like the look of it a lot. Uh, it confused me. Like, one small funny thing was the, the back of the place of power cards shows like a tree with like a portal. I thought that portal was a one. I was like, when do the strength two locations come out? They all look like that. Uh, I also I, was looking through that deck like, I don't know the first time. Yeah. But I will say that like a lot of the stuff is laid out very well. It's, uh, it, it's very good looking and everything. But... One of the things that bothers me a little bit is that I had a hard time because of how well thematically and like the thematic is like is in the language. Yes, I have a very hard time differentiating when something refers to an elder or a council member or a specialist. Uh, yes, a lot of the things are fine. Binding a ritual to a place of power, I got that down. I do that a lot. You don't get a lot of specialists yeah, in the circle, game. Outer circle. Hard There's to a teach. lot of that. That's fair. No, I, I I agree with that. There is some language usage issues here. Yeah. A few minor things. There's a, I didn't mention this in the overview, but there's a couple tokens as an action you can put on top of your cards that will add, move you up in the Coven track, or that you can make your thing get more. I don't think there's, they're necessarily easy to see which cards have them on that. Mm. Um, but the biggest egregious, I like the, most of the components of this game. I very much highly dislike the mana and the point track. Oh, so much. The mana track goes back and forth like this. Mm -hmm. The point track goes up to 10 and back to 10. And you're going up on the track. The mana track you're moving up and down on all the time. And it, mm -hmm. it's messy. Those discs fall off. It's super messy. I almost 
I don't know what the, the, just a better track would have fixed it. I mean, when we played, we complained about it the, in every game the whole time, especially yes. the mana track. Yes. Um, yeah. On another note, I think th so. Each of these witches you can play. I showed you the side everyone has. There's asymmetrical sides. I'll never not play with the asymmetrical sides. It's so much interesting to have one one person can place their their uh, elders on cards that haven't been lowered yet. One person can move up on a track and gets really cool things on the track. I like those so much. They feel balanced to me. I just would never play the basic stuff. The one hard one, because so many of them have like a, a cute, fun little, oh, you can pay, place power stones and get some bonuses. Cool. All those are like fun, neat little changes. And then one faction doesn't get extra resources, but they draw nine cards at the start of the round. That is a hard faction for a first-time player. Sure, but first-time yeah. players will normally play the basic sides of the board. Yeah, but I you just assume. said that you will always play with the factions, and Ooh. you teach games a lot to people, right? That's true. Well, I'm just, you're just going to have to play with that, that faction. I, I'll play right. with it if it's a problem. I yeah. actually think that faction's fun because you have just lots of cards. Yeah, the, those cards are overwhelming at the beginning. Oh, they are. Yeah, because you and don't so know having what they nine do. of them is like double as overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do like the cards. I, that's the main feature of this game, right? The cards that right. can be used for anything. I can put them here as an artifact. I can discard a couple of them for a resource. I can tuck them underneath the board, put them on the side of the board. Yeah, the the, the abilities, the multi-use cards, the sort of. Open door combo go to town feel of this game. That's where it shines for me. That feeling of I can do anything. I mean, I can, and then especially again when you get one of those abilities that you're like, oh, from now on, every time I do this, I get two potions, and everybody goes, what? That's broken. And then somebody plays another card over there, and I'm like, no, that's broken. I yeah. love that feeling. That feeling of very quickly, I am doing stuff that. I feel like I shouldn't even be allowed to do it's so good. That is witchcraft. It's kind of, yeah, 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 it's witchcraft. <laughs> that feeling is so rewarding to me. That's why I love card games with um, with abilities on the cards. Just, you know, as a, as a general rule of thumb. Uh, and this one delivers that in, in spades. It's also good because the game has quick turns. Quick snappy yeah. turns? Not... Not quite quick, snappy turns, but quick, we need a quick, term for that. Then. Quick, clunky turns. <laughs> okay, no, but but I'm doing an action, UCT. and you do an action. We go around. Now that can sometimes, and it what it does, it's a weird thing. You'll play the, the first round of this, and you'll go, "This is gonna be a really fast game." Then the second round will be twice as long as the first. Yes. And then the final round will be longer than that. And in that final round, that you can also get to a point where you are done. You're like, and I'm finished. And your opponent's like, well, I have like six more actions. Yes. Or however many opponents. You're like, oh, okay. And you just basically wait for them to finish the game. I don't think it's a big deal, but that can happen. You said last night you ate a, a sandwich while you're waiting for someone to finish the game. I absolutely did. A certain gaming machine uh, took one sandwich length extra turns. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That happens in quite a few games. Uh, Everdell does it a little bit. Yeah, there's a few games that do it. doesn't bother me too much, but yes, you kind of have to be aware that you might be done before somebody else is. This is kind of like a grown-up Everdell. It is. It is a little bit. Um, and I really like that game, too. There's only this a few one. letters difference. <laughs> Everdell. I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. These are some wild accusations, <laughs> you opposing young man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there's a few, a, I have a few minor problems with the gameplay itself. I think the game is fun, and a lot of things about it. But some of the things that battle over the different places that you do in between rounds, you do a battle, and that battle is interesting. One thing about the battle I like a lot is you're using your mana, and the more mana you spend, you're going to get these rewards even if someone else beats you. The winner mm -hmm. gets a uh, first player marker on one of them, but the rest of the time they just get the, the, the Stone of Power. That Stone of Power will double one of your... Rituals. Those mm -hmm. rituals are like two, three points. Yes. And it feels like a whole lot of work to get, and a lot of rules teaching, because I have to say, okay, this ritual has a line on it. That line matches this thing. You put that on there, and you have a ritual on there. You then double it. And that's if a lot of rules for like two more points. And I'm like, or I put the specials out that gives me eight points. <laughs> you know, and it's just, yes. that's a minor thing that I don't love it's about the game. It's like consequential points. It's like, ugh. But they can matter, but it, 
I'm just saying the amount of effort into the game. I know they wanted it to... If you didn't have that, there's no reason to be higher than someone else on those sure. last things. I almost wish there was some other benefit. <clears throat> the more interaction is going to be those worker placement spots. At first, you're like, ah, there's plenty of them. And then by the end, you're like, if you if you go there, I will, I will, I will, I will cut you. You know? Yeah, they dry up quick at the end because some things are very important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's one of the big things for this game that holds it back for me. I, I enjoy what's going on, but I feel like the teach is tough because there are a lot of those types of things where they're, they're weird concepts. They're a little bit clunky to teach, and you have to remind people. Remember that you have that stone of power, but you can't double your four-point. I know you have a single four-point card there, but that's not the thing you can double. You have to look at this tiny symbol up on the side there. The um, buying those extra little tokens that you can put on cards. There's, there's yeah, a, it's no, a little clunky that mechanism. Yeah. And I know that I'm talking about teaching the game primarily because a lot of times in this job we're teaching games to people yeah. at conventions. So I'm, I'm a little bit more <coughs> swung that way. It maybe for me it's a little bit more of a detractor. But the other thing is I feel like the game runs a little long for my tastes. Like how much fun I'm getting out of it. By the end of the second round. Maybe a little bit into the third. I'm like, I've done a lot. I feel pretty set, but there's the longest round of the game left for me. Mm. And uh, it, it feels a tad long for me, and it doesn't sound like it is for you guys. I, no, I really, really like it, and I, I agree with what you guys are saying, all of it. And in fact, the one thing holding it back for me from a really high score is the clunky score track, the sort of overdeveloped nature, and maybe not overdeveloped, just sort of they then didn't go back in and trim some things back. Because I agree about all that stuff. The little, the, the runes or whatever. It's a bunch of rigmarole for two points. Who cares? Figure out something that's cleaner. The track, the, oh wait, tens place and ones place. No, stop. Okay? <laughs> you, you do that when, when the score is 12. Not when it's... 58. 112. 100 and whatever, yeah, no. Um, so those things definitely hold it back for me. But having said all that, man, this is such my kind of game. I love this stuff. I love the look. I love the multi-use cards. I love the, the settings really neat. Yeah, I'm coming in pretty high on this one. Um, I'm going to give it an 8.5. Wow. I really like it. This is, and the length didn't bother me. That wasn't one of the things for me. Mm. But all that other stuff is definitely holding it back a bit. The kind of thing that, yes, goes away if you play this game a lot and um, with the same people especially. Those little finicky, annoying sort of bits should see themselves out for the most part. But I agree that you kind of tighten the, the bolts down a little bit. Yeah, I'm coming in at, at 6.5 for me. It's almost, I almost like it a lot. But it's it's being held back. I think for me, like I said, game length, and this is regardless of the sandwich. That was more of a funny anecdote. I was already like, I'm feeling done with this before that last round, yeah. but I was having fun with it, and so it's a six point five. It's almost something I I would recommend. Did you like it better with two or four? Two, because there's not really much interaction. the The battle phase was okay, and I got a few more power stones out of it in a lower player count game, and I sure. think they scaled it down pretty well. They, you know, yeah, you use different spots, sides of the like boards, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's better at two. Um, I didn't really miss having other players around to kind of wait for their turns. Sure. Yeah, I'm, 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 me and Z have a lot of crossover in this kind of genre. We both love the card engine building stuff. I love it so much. Um, but I'm just a little shy of you. I'm giving it an eight. Oh, I think, okay. I think it's I really good. I going to be lower. No, I, because I really like that whole idea of I have seven actions. I'll take this action. I'll take this action. Ooh, if I do this, I'll get some resources. And also, like, the whole chicken aspect of when to take your resources at the top. I just really like that. Yes. Like, oh, I take them now. Oh, wait, can I build one more card before I do that? But I need these resources to build the card. Well, the resource management is there. It's fun. But it's three things. Yes, and I like that Thank a lot. Thank you. I don't need to worry about, like, stone, grass, something, peat. Nobody, nobody wants peat, Okay. I don't want to have to deal with it. <laughs> I also think the three Sorry, the three resources Pete. are are fairly equal in value, which also helps. Yeah. I hate yeah. when there's a game I'm just sitting there going, is that seven or five? I, you know, I don't know what the value of a resource is. His, I know what they are. So that works well, too. And I don't love the theme as much as you either. Though. Okay. I'm kind of like, eh, whatever. I like the art, but and I love that. 
that black really pointy hat. I want to get one of those. But um, anyway, that's... We'll be a wizard. I got it. <laughs> that's Evenfall. I'm Tom Basil. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. Evenfall is coming. <laughs>